Zero Accounting Software 2023. Adjusting Entry Accrued Interest. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me, therefore I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the patting is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation. Get great guitars. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicate tab to duplicate it. Back to the tab to the middle accounting drop down. We want to open the balance sheet. I'm opening the comparative balance sheet we made last time. If you don't have that, you can open the standard balance sheet. Tabbing to the right, accounting drop down. We want to open up the income statement. Again, I'm opening a comparative one. If you don't have that, you can open the standard income statement. Tab into the left, looking at the balance sheet. We're now thinking about an adjusting entry, period end adjusting entry as of the cutoff date for us, that being the end of the second month, 228. We're looking at one related to the liability account to start off with on our loan payables. Now remember, there's a couple different things that you might have to deal with with regards to the loan payables. One uh, is the fact that you might have some accrued interest that you need to record, interest that has been accumulated, which you have not yet paid. So that's a standard kind of accrual entry. That's what we'll, we'll deal with this time. Another common issue you might have is breaking out the short-term and long-term portion of the loan which you might not need if you're a sole proprietorship doing the adjusting entry for taxes because you might just need the income statement for tax reporting purposes. But if you're doing external reporting and possibly for internal needs, then you might have to break the short-term and long-term portion out. We will deal with that uh, in future presentations. Right now, we want to just think about that accrued interest concept. To do that, let's go back on it. We're gonna deal, so we're gonna deal with this 5,000 loan uh, first, and then we'll, in a future presentation, deal with the larger loan breaking out short-term and long-term portions of it. So I'm gonna go into our Excel worksheet, and I'm gonna make another Excel worksheet. This is the amortization table for the long loan. Uh, I'm gonna create another just little amortization table for the short-term loan, and just to understand the concept of why we might need an adjusting entry for the accrued interest. Now, our entry will be fairly small in dollar amount and therefore possibly not necessary because of immateriality purposes. It's not being a large dollar amount, but uh, the concept remains the same, right? So I'm gonna hold down control and, well, actually, no, I'm just gonna add another plus button over here. 
and this is I'm going to call this the short loan or short loan a small loan short loan <laughs> uh, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna format the entire worksheet so I'm gonna go up top into the triangle and right click on the worksheet this is my baseline formatting formatting the entire worksheet I like to work in currency and then uh, negative numbers bracketed no dollar sign and I'll keep the decimals gonna say okay I'm gonna make the worksheet a little bit larger by hitting the plus over here or you can hold down control and scroll up on the scroll wheel we're currently at 205 percent on the zoom in let's go a little larger I'm at <laughs> I'm at 265 all right and then in a1 I'm just gonna put the terms of our loan so I'm gonna imagine the terms of our loan it's a five thousand dollar loan and this by the way I'm gonna make this whole thing triangle up top home tab Font group bolding the whole thing to hopefully make it a little easier to see this is what we would get from of course the loan documentation and possibly they would give us an amortization table with the loan but maybe they wouldn't and maybe we would have to just create our amortization table which we can do ourselves we can use online tools to help with the amortization table and or we can you know get a CPA firm to help us build an amortization table months we're going to say it's just a three-month loan so it's a very short-term loan I'm going to say the rate is very large because it's a short-term loan and because I want to have a fairly significant dollar amount so I'm going to say 0 0.35 35 percent on the rate home tab number group percentifying it and then the payment that we're going to make three payments I'm going to do a payment calculation just to show you how that works to figure what the payment will be which is a useful tool if you're trying to make projections on what kind of loan you might be able to afford in the future for example I'm gonna say negative PMT negative is possibly not the most proper way to start it but I think it's the easiest way to start it instead of an equals and then we have the rate the rate is gonna be that 35 percent but that's gonna be a yearly rate and we only have three months we're dealing with months so I'm going to take that and divide it by 12 that will give us the monthly rate comma the number of periods is going to be three that's in terms of months which matches the monthly rate now so that's good comma the present value is the 5,000 that's the loan amount you could close it up or you don't really need to I can just hit enter and we come out to a payment that we're going to make of 1,764.82 we're going to make three of them now you could try to say okay well what's the total interest that we're going to pay on this well the total payments are going to be simply I'm going to make this a little wider three payments of this so this times three is uh 5294.46 so that means total interest interest would be equal to the total payments minus the 5,000 however we would need to break that interest out between the three payments that we're going to be making so let's just make a little amortization table to see how this works and we can see it conceptually on a payment by payment basis so I'm going to make the C a little bit larger make a skinny C skinny C C went on a diet and then we're going to say this is going to and the diet actually worked what kind of diet did you do see I want you could get rich with that diet tell people how that happened and then interest this will be loan I spelled that wrong in interest that is it's not my the keyboard wasn't working loan reduction it's not my fault loan balance nothing's ever my fault I just you just don't understand what the real problem here's the home tab uh, alignment center and then font group and we're gonna hit the bucket drop down it's gonna be black and white so there is the loan terms let's put a border around this home tab font group just borderize it all right so then I'm gonna put the dates I'm gonna make this a date column now home tab numbers let's format this in the format of a date short date and then I'm gonna say this is on 21523 and then I could say 31523 and I'm gonna copy that down using my 
using my fill handle. So there's the payments uh, that we're going to make. Now we're going to say that the the loan happened on 215. So this is point zero, and then we're going to say that we're going to make the first payment on 315, the middle of uh, the second month. So let's say the payment's going to be this amount. The interest that we're going to calculate will be equal to 5,000 times 35%, but that would be for the entire year. This is just one month. So I'm going to take that and divide the whole thing by two. I don't need any brackets or anything because order of operations should be okay with multiplication division. So that comes out to that. That's not what I expected it to uh to come out to so wait i divided it by two not 12. double click this should be a 12 not a two all right then we're going to say the reduction to the loan is going to be this amount the payment minus the interest so in other words i'm going to pay this amount each time the interest is like the rent on the purchasing power of the money it's going to go away i'm not going to get a loan reduction for that and then that means that this amount is the amount that's actually going to reduce the loan balance Here's the loan balance. You can also call it loan principal, loan reduction in principal, but I always spell principal wrong, like it's the principal of a school. And then people make fun of me uh, because my spelling didn't work right. And then, so I avoid that by saying loan reduction. And then sometimes I spell loan wrong and people make fun of me, uh, but whatever. So in any case, uh, let's make, let's double click on this and make this an absolute reference saying F4 this is dollar sign B dollar sign four. And that means that when I copy it down, it's not going to move this cell down. So I'm going to copy that because the payment's going to be the same each time across the interest. However, if I double click on that, that when I copy it down, I want this cell to move, which it will. I don't want this cell to move. Therefore, I need to make that absolute. That's cell B4, B4. What? No, that's B3, B3. So I'm going to F2 on that one or F4. I'm in there. I select F4 or you can put a dollar sign before the B and the three. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one uh, is easier to think about. I can copy that one down. And then this one is doing what we want because these two cells, I want them both to move down when I copy it down. So I'm just going to autofill that one down. This one is also going to do what we want because I want these two cells to move down. Notice the only time it really doesn't do what I want usually is if I have a cell that's coming from my data set over here on the left hand side. Okay, so let's copy that down and then I should get to zero. That's my indication that my amortization table is correct. All right, so if I then put some brackets around this thing, uh, there it is. It's perfect. It's perfect. Let's put a, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's go to our C column, home tab, and format paint another I column, a skinny I column over here. And then we're gonna say that, uh, that we're gonna use this and say, well, now at this point in time, notice that these loans are happening in the middle of the month. So right here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay the next payment on uh, March 15th, but the cutoff date is 228 into February. That means that there's been 15 days that happened in February uh, before I make the payment in March. So that means that basically half of the interest related to that should be incurred in February instead of March. Now, so that would be this number divided by two. Now that's a pretty, pretty small number. So it might be immaterial uh, and not really necessary to make an adjusting entry of two, but just remember that that's the concept, that's the idea. So you could have a loan structure that's not in, in installment purposes, not paid off each month, or with the loan amount could be a lot larger, in which case the kind of adjusting entry could be a lot larger, but that's the principle behind it. So what do we need to do? Well, that interest then needs to be recorded before uh, uh, February. It needs to be pulled into February. It's a timing difference, a classic adjusting entry. So the adjusting entry is gonna be interest expense i'm going to make this a little bit larger debit and if i was to think of this in terms of debits and credits i'm going to say debit credit and we have to basically think in terms of debits and credits with adjusting entries there's really no way around it but with the smaller ones even if you don't really understand debits and credits 
you can still kind of reason around why it's a debit and a credit and kind of finagle it and see which debit or credit increases any particular account. All right, and the other side's gonna, gonna go into, I'm gonna call it interest payable. You might also call it accrued interest. It's a liability either way. I like using payable because I think that to me is a clearer indication that it's a liability. It's a payable type uh, of account. So there it is. Now, the, so that will pull that $72 of interest before the cutoff date so that we can record the expense as of the point in time that we're reporting our financial statements. Now, notice that you might say, but wait a second, if I leave that there, then it's gonna kind of mess up my normal reporting by the bookkeeper because the bookkeeper is gonna to wanna to report according to this amortization schedule. So they are usually gonna report as of 315, they're gonna to wanna to say interest expense, uh, interest expense of this amount and then and then the loan re reduction or let's just say loan account should go down by this and then the payment or cash let's say would be the negative sum of of that negative sum of that where I got my loan reduction backwards. This should be a debit and not negative. Okay, there we, so, and then this ties out to that. So notice that this, this entry will mess up the normal journal entry for, for the account. So you might then say, well, maybe I'll reverse that. So this is one that we might do a reversing entry for possibly. We don't really have to, we could kind of leave it there and then do another adjusting entry but we'll do a reversing entry and we'll talk more about that in a future presentation for now though let's just record this amount so let's put some brackets around it we're going to do that with a standard just a journal entry so i'm going to go over here and go to the first tab and our journal entries we find them in zero by going to the accounting drop down reports and then we're going to say this is going to be a journal report and then within the journal report we have our add journal. That's what we want to do. Add a journal. Their narration, I'm just going to say this is an adjusting entry. You might put more than that, but I want to be able to indicate that this is an adjusting entry specifically so that whoever's looking at this entry can see that it's not part of the normal day-to-day -day accounting process, but rather the month end or year end adjusting entry process, which they can tell by the fact that one, it's a journal entry, two, I specify that it's an adjusting entry, and three, the date is always gonna be at the end of the period. So I'm gonna go here and say that this is gonna be the end of Feb, Feb 28, Feb 28. Now zero has this really neat reversing thing here that says, hey, if it's a reversing entry, we will do it for you. We'll just reverse it uh, as, as of, so you can set it to reverse it. Again, I, I don't think that's in other software like QuickBooks Online, and that could be a, a nice, uh, useful tool. I'm gonna go back in and do the reversing entry later, just so you can see what, why you would do a reversing entry and when, but we might touch on that just so we can see it, we can see it in a future presentation. So narrative, good, show journal on cash basis, okay. And then this is gonna be, the account is gonna be a debit to interest expense. And then it's for the amount of 72.92, 72.92. And the credit adjusting entry is gonna go to loan, this, which, which loan was it? Uh, the B of A, I think. Let's double check it. B of A loan, the $5,000 one. Actually, no, I'm gonna make it to another account. I'm not gonna go to the loan. I'm gonna make another account. It's gonna be a liability account. So I gotta come up with a number. That's why I'm in here. Let's make it, uh, let's make it two, four, three, five. So I'm gonna go up top and say, add type it's gonna be a liability. We'll just type in the number before I forget it. Two, four, three, five. And then it's gonna be a liability, current liability, name, loan payable, which you might also call accrued uh, interest or not loan payable, interest. 
which you might also call accrued interest. Sorry about that. My head's not working right now. All right, so there we have it. So that looks good. So let's go ahead and post it and check it out. Posting it and then checking it out. Balance sheet. Let's hit the update. And we have then uh, the, the loan payable account down here is in the liability section. Loan payable now has the interest payable. So there's the 72. 92 notice that you see it in here as a uh, journal entry and that's good and also note that we recorded it as of the end of february and that's i just want to point that out because oftentimes people are like well yeah if you if you put it in there as of the end of february you're correct i guess as of that date but what about the day before february the income statement if you ran it before feb before the end of february up up to up to the 27th it would be wrong and you're right you you could say well why don't i why don't i try to make this adjustment so that it so that it records periodically every day correctly uh for you know why because that's tedious right it would be tedious to do that it would also make it harder to see that this is an adjusting entry and uh and so and we and it would be more confusing on the bookkeeping side and we'd have all these journal entries right so we want to make we want to say yeah we're just we're going to sacrifice the fact that it's not exactly correct for that 15 day period before the end of the year but for us reporting as of year end then our, our income statement is correct for for that whole time frame that's the idea okay so we're going to go back and then on the income statement if i update this one we reported then interest expense this is internet we should have had no i put it down here there it is interest expense uh so let's go into that and check it out so we've added another 7292 so that looks good okay so that's the general idea that's a classic basically kind of adjusting entry because it has one balance sheet account and one income account although again it's kind of a small adjusting entry due to the type of loan that we had here let's open up another report let's open up the journal report so i'm going to duplicate a tab and if we want to see the adjusting entries we've put in place we can open up that journal report accounting drop down reports and i can open up the journal report and check it out Let's change the date up top, hitting the date drop down. We're just gonna make it for the day that we uh, did the adjusting entry. So at the end of January, January, oh, I'm sorry, the end of February, February 28 to February 28, update, February 28 to February 28, update. So, so now you can see that, uh, you can see our adjusting entry having a manual journal entry which notice that they kind of marked off and they designated as the manual journal entries. Those are the ones that are likely that we put in place. So, so now we can kind of run a report fairly easy, easily and indicate which transactions are period end transactions because one, they're entered as of February 28, although a lot of other transactions were entered as of February 28. But two, they're going to be manual journal entries that we entered as of that date. And three, we're usually going to be indicating in the description that these are adjusting entries. And you can further filter by hitting the drop down up here and say you just want to say the posted manual journals only so it's not going to show us all the other all the other journals that were that were entered we have just the manual transactions now note that even that isn't perfect because i still have these other transactions you'll recall that i entered a payroll transaction that's a norm that's part of the normal journal entry process with a payroll here so that's why we still even with the manual journal entries need to be indicating that these are the adjusting entries we can also export these reports to Excel. And if we were to provide them to the bookkeeper to show you know, what we did as on the accounting or adjusting department, we can then further filter this report. We can also try to filter it up top further, but I think the easiest way to filter it from here would be to export it to Excel and just delete the items that are not uh, the journal entries that are part of the adjusting entry process. So we can provide the adjusting entries only uh, if we need to whoever to whoever needs them. 
All right, let's also open a trial balance just to see where we stand at this point. Accounting dropdown reports. And we're going to be opening up the trial balance, the trustee trial balance, the good old T to the B, not tuberculosis. Trial balance. And we're going to say, let's do a custom date as of the cutoff date, which is 228, Feb 28. That's the cutoff date. So, uh, of 2023. 2023. Why is it in 2022? K paso por favor. All right. So if your numbers tie out to these, then that's great. If not, uh, then maybe it's a timing issue. If you were on before uh, and you're off uh, this time, then the adjustments we made were, of course, to the new liability interest payable account we put in place as well as the interest uh, expense account.